Street Fighter EX, a necessity for gracious living. I don't think anyone's ever said that before. During the mid-90s, the landscape of fighting games would change drastically as it shifted from 2D-based sprites to 3D polygonal-based fighters. This popular trend started with the rise to prominence of Virtua Fighter, but it wouldn't be long until the likes of Tekken, Dead or Alive, Bloody Raw and Soul Blade would too find a huge appreciative audiences. As one would expect, it would only be a matter of time until the biggest fighting game franchise of the early 90s would also jump into the realm of polygons. Street Fighter EX, developed by Arika, would arrive at the party in December 1996. Still, by that point, it would fail to impress with its metaphorically drifting amongst a large sea of polygonal fighters. Culturally, this was no Street Fighter 2. However, despite not standing out even close to what had come before it, the game still had its fair share of fans for bringing the world of Street Fighter to the next dimension. And it even had some fantastic new characters too, such as Skullamania. I mean, who doesn't love Skullamania? All this was possible due to the awesome graphical capabilities that Sony's hardware brought to the table. So holding such thoughts in mind, how and why is there a Street Fighter EX game available to play on the much more rudimentary Super Nintendo? Let's find out. I am Lady Decade and this is the illegal Street Fighter EX Plus Alpha for the Super Nintendo. A massive thank you to everyone who has hit that subscribe button recently. Apart from the fact that it blows me away that you like my content enough to do that in the first place, it has helped me so much in ensuring that these videos are suggested to more new people. Subscribing to this channel, or even better than that, supporting the show on Patreon means that I can afford more silly costumes, like the Chun-Li one today. So thanks to all of you, I currently have a My Shiranui costume on its way in the post. So subscribe to learn about some illegal King of Fighters soon. Ah oh yes, illegal video games, aren't they just wonderful? You've got to love the range of oddities out there that have come from unlicensed sources. Regarding bootleg gaming, few franchises in existence have been dubiously profited from quite as much as that of Street Fighter. Ever since the smashed success of Street Fighter 2 in 1991, bootleggers from China and Taiwan, much like Capcom themselves, have repeatedly returned to the Street Fighter well for more profit. One of the earliest and most famous examples of this was, of course, the arcade ROM hack that is colloquially known as Rainbow Edition. This illegal Street Fighter 2 iteration introduced the ability to throw multiple fireballs on screen and let you switch who you were playing as mid-fight. In fact, one element the game introduced, the increased play speed, would unfold to be so appealing that Capcom would introduce such a feature in their official next iteration of the game, Turbo Hyper Fighting, so these bootlegs sometimes make a significant impact. Hummer Team, who we have talked about on this channel a lot, would bring a range of unlicensed Street Fighter games to the NES. Today we will focus on an illegal Street Fighter game available for the next generation of Super Nintendo hardware. But how on earth were the team making a conversion of Street Fighter EX to run on the Super Nintendo going to be able to pull off such a feat? Well, the answer is... Not particularly well. The game features a title screen that prominently displays the Street Fighter EX Plus A logo, a name and logo shared with the Sony PlayStation port of Street Fighter EX, which featured a few extra bells and whistles the original arcade game lacked. As you can probably guess, the Super Nintendo does not bring the same additions to the table. Arriving at the character select screen, you will notice that the fighters' portraits have indeed been carried over from EX, and the character select background too has been crudely recreated. 
In the PlayStation version of the game, you will note that the bold, colourful backdrop moved psychedelically. And to be fair, so does the Super Nintendo version, even if the two look a bit different. Another thing you'll notice from the off is that the game's rosters differ wildly, with Skullamania and Hokuto being the only EX newcomers available in the SNES game. Akuma is available from the start, despite him being restricted to the hidden character role on the PlayStation. Something else odd is that who you choose to play as determines who you will face off against first in this game, with another character's portrait being highlighted in relation to the one you pick. Anyway, let's talk about the action. Round fight! Wow, this is sh hilariously bad, in fact. As you can see from this, the bootleggers would make no attempt to create a polygonal Street Fighter on the Super Nintendo, but instead create a dodgy sprite based offering that features still backgrounds, which are just screenshots of the ones from the real Street Fighter EX. As shameless a move as this looks to be by the bootleggers, it is worth noting that when they chose to make this, they were not even the first team to take a polygonal fighting game and then cash in on its name value to sell a title carrying its name on weaker hardware. In fact, Sega would unashamedly pull off such a stunt back in 1994 when they released a dodgy cash grab version of Virtua Fighter 2 for the underpowered Sega Genesis. A game, I might add, that Sega of Japan wanted to push so hard that they would altogether cancel Sega of America's successful Eternal Champions franchise to ensure that it never stole the Sega Genesis Virtua Fighter 2's thunder. As bad as Virtua Fighter 2 on Sega's 16-bit hardware was, I must admit that Street Fighter EX2 for Super Nintendo is even more abominable, so let's discuss this monstrosity deeper. After hearing the recycling of that iconic versus scream jingle from Street Fighter 2, you will instantly notice that all the music and sound effects from the game have been lifted directly from Street Fighter 2. Fortunately, features taken from the seminal classic end there. Combat-wise, you will notice that there are some similarities with Street Fighter 2, however, nothing looks or feels even close to as fluid. To make matters worse, much like an 8-bit game, the whole thing is experienced through no more than a simple two-button control scheme, with one button being mapped to kicks and another to punches. Some special moves are possible, which are executable through joystick motions paired with the button taps. Super moves are also possible, but only when the super meter is full, providing at least something in this dull affair. This game may be s, but you know what isn't? Subscribing to this channel! Oh, love me. Pathetic. As for Street Fighter EX for Super Nintendo, the control scheme may feel familiar if you have played other bootleg fighting games for the platform. That's because this one contains precisely the same fighting game engine as many others available for the hardware, including the dodgy X-Men vs Street Fighter game we have looked at in the past. Specifics that all these games have in common are that they contain audio ripped from Street Fighter 2 and feature combo systems without any grappling or throwing moves. Fighting in the game is made all the more rudimentary due to this game's weird hitboxes, poor hit detection and horrible frame rates. Pair all of this with the game's floaty jumps, animation is rarely smooth. Street Fighter EX for Super Nintendo is just as jerky as its fellow illegitimate family members. The fighting engine we speak of is said to have been created by the DVS Electronics Company based out of Taiwan. While not credited to have made Street Fighter EX, it is very likely that they are the outfit behind it. Some of the character sprites in this game look dodgier than others, with Guile in particular looking like he has been ordered from Wish. Unfortunately, Skullamania doesn't look much like Skullamania either, which is a shame as he never appeared in any official 2D Street Fighter games. 
M. Bison features as the game's last boss. And once he is defeated, you get a simple message saying, Congratulations, you are number one. We are number one. <laughs> Thinking about it, I guess you would have to be number one to put up with playing through this. Undoubtedly, the official versions of Street Fighter EX are found to make a big splash. These polygonal-based fighters were not imaginative enough for a world where the likes of the Tekken series were already thriving. On the other hand, Street Fighter EX for the Super Nintendo doesn't even attempt to replicate what made Street Fighter EX stand out from the Street Fighter games before it. This one is no more than a cash-in that tries to profit off a Street Fighter sub-franchise that was not even particularly popular to begin with. I guess the intrigue with this one comes from what Street Fighter EX would look like on 16-bit Nintendo hardware. Still, disappointingly, all that is on offer here is an experience that is no different to many Super Nintendo fighting game bootlegs. So Street Fighter EX on the Super Nintendo gets a big thumbs down from me. If you enjoyed this one, subscribing to the channel and supporting the show on Patreon will direct a portion of this show's profits to more fighting game cosplay. Which costume should I buy next? Melina, Anna Williams or Morrigan? Let me know in the comments section below. See you soon.